Hello everybody, welcome back to VMC. I am Dr. M. We are going to discuss the actual procedure of euthanasia and kind of generalities of what to expect during that appointment. This is a sensitive topic and isn't right for everybody, so if you do not wish to watch this, please click away now. So some um, people are lucky enough to live in an area where a veterinarian will do a house call. That can be wonderful. However, there are also going to be times, whether on emergency or if you're in an area that doesn't have a home euthanasia service, then you will be going into the clinic. And so um, I would ask for and expect medication that you give before the appointment to help to reduce stress for your pet before the euthanasia appointment. Um, as I mentioned, uh, for situational stress, gabapentin, trazodone, um, alprazolam, those sorts of medications are very commonly used. And um, if your pet is particularly fearful or stressed, then giving a dose the night before, as well as two hours before the appointment can be incredibly helpful. So that's the first step. We give medication a few hours before the appointment to reduce stress. Stress. Then the next step um, is that the veterinarian will give sedation. Now the um, every veterinarian kind of has particular combinations of medications that they might feel most comfortable with. Um, these injections sometimes go under the skin, sometimes they go into a muscle. Um, as with any injection, there can be a little bit of pain, and so not all pets react, but some pets might be able to jump a little bit or yelp a little bit. Um, this can happen with any injection, and so I just like to warn people, um, it, it might not even be that that particular medication stings, but sometimes an injection is uncomfortable, and if the pet is a little bit worried or tense, they might um, respond to that injection. Then um, the injection will need time to take effect. And depending on which medication is used in the individual pet, this can take anywhere between like three minutes to 15 minutes. Um, I would expect somewhere in that time frame. And once the pet is sedated, they will hopefully be fairly unconscious or very relaxed at the least. And at that point, Depending on the veterinarian, again, um, an IV catheter might be placed. A lot of veterinarians prefer this because then you have kind of assured access to that vein, which can be very helpful, um, especially if blood pressure starts to go down, it can be hard to find a vein again. So making sure that you have a catheter in a vein um, can be very helpful in making the procedure smoother. However, for some pets, they might find having that catheter placed stressful, and so it might not be. Or there are also some pets who are going to be dehydrated enough or small enough or um, old enough that it's not possible to get an IV catheter placed. And so for some of those patients, we would use what's called a butterfly needle. It's a very small little short needle that we can access a vein with. Some other times we may access um, blood flow in the abdomen. Your veterinarian would tell you if they're going to try for a larger vessel in side of the abdomen. It will all depend on the size of the pet, the temperament of the pet, how sedated they are, um, you know, all of those factors matter. Basically, you are looking to do the last injections anywhere where you are fairly assured that you will be able to do the entire injection um, smoothly. If the sedation hasn't been enough, um, and the pet is still a bit too with it, then we will often use medication that is used to um, induce anesthesia. And so the one that most people are familiar with is called propofol. There are some others, but we might use some propofol or something similar to induce 
anesthesia before the final injection that actually stops the heart. So once they are under a plane of anesthesia, they are not conscious anymore, they are not aware of anything that is happening, and then the last injection can be given. Now that injection is most commonly a medication called pentobarbital, and what it does is it first spreads um, actually to the brain and stops any brain activity, then after that it actually stops the heart. It's essentially a massive overdose of an injectable anesthetic drug. They are not aware of what is happening. And so it can startle people because sometimes there can be some odd breathing. There can even be sometimes vocalizations that happen with that odd breathing because of how the air passes by the larynx in the back of the throat. Um, but the animal is not aware of any of that. This is simply the body response to uh, the fact that the heart has stopped and then the body will have some responses to that. Um, and also all of the muscles that help with breathing will be relaxing and that can cause big um, movement of air out of the chest when that happens. Um, the diaphragm is a very big muscle. I just don't want it to startle people. It can happen, it doesn't always, but if you hear it, it's nothing to worry about. The other things that often happen, because all the muscles in the body are relaxing, the colon sphincters and the bladder, urinary bladder sphincters are also relaxing, so the pet will often urinate or defecate. That's totally okay, it's very normal, don't worry about it, we'll clean it up, it's not, not an issue. Um, the other thing that often surprises people is that pet eyelids don't close. Um, and this is something I guess that TB has told us happens with death, but in reality it doesn't. The eyelids are muscles that we use to blink, and when they are relaxed, they're open, and so you should expect your pet's eyes to also remain open. That is perfectly normal, and um, I don't want it to spook anybody. Once the last injection has been given, the veterinarian will listen for a heartbeat. They may also check uh, for a pupil response. They may also check for any uh, breathing and they will confirm that your pet has died. At that point, it's very common to offer some time to you if you are needing it and take whatever time you need. Um, there isn't any rush here. And after that, um, the remains will need to be dealt with. Now it will depend a little bit on where you're located. Um, some places you are allowed to do burials. It might have to be a certain distance from water and a certain depth, etc., etc. Your veterinarian can fill you in on the local laws where you are. Um, most commonly, I would say, people choose for cremation. And with that, you can either choose not to have ashes back or you can choose to get ashes back. Um, some clinics may also put you in touch with places that can offer paw prints in clay or in ink. Some places can offer to give you a little sample of your pet's fur if you wish to take it with you. Um, these are all things to really discuss before the actual appointment so that when you get to the appointment you're not having to make all these decisions and that you can just be there with your pet. I want to make it incredibly clear that as veterinary professionals, we do not judge people whether they wish to stay or not to stay for the euthanasia process. Some people have incredibly valid reasons for why they are not able to stay. We pet them and feed them and talk to them and love them whether you're there or not there. It is ideal if the owner can stay until the pet is sedated. Um, but once they're sedated, 
they don't know what's going on and if it is best for the person's mental health to not be there, then we support that and we wish to let you know that we will do our best to love on your pet until they are gone. If you know someone who absolutely is not able to be there, don't judge them for that either. They're simply doing the best they can and the fact that they have chosen to end suffering for their pet tells you how much they do love them. And that is why as veterinarians, we do not judge people whether they stay or whether they go. After the euthanasia, it can be very helpful to have someone to drive you home um, or to spend some time with some loved ones. It can also be very helpful to have a counselor, therapist, social worker, other mental health expert to be of support to you. So try to set up that support before the actual euthanasia when it's possible to do so, um, as that will be very necessary um, throughout the grieving process. And be kind to yourself when you grieve. Um, remember that what you did was in your pet's best interest and that it is such a lovely gift that you are able to give to your pet to prevent them from suffering. All right, I think that's all that I have for today. So please comment down below if you have any questions that I haven't answered um, and feel free to share this video with anybody you know who needs more information about what to expect with a euthanasia appointment. All right, we will see you on the next one.